I just started crying because I'm like, I don't, like, that's not something you ever prepare for or expect to happen. This is an epidemic. It's something that, yes, we have a big problem in Montana. Gun deaths taking a tremendous toll in Montana. Why our state ranks so high and the heartbreak it's leaving behind. Also, what's causing hundreds of birds in Billings to drop dead? And when it comes to St. Patrick's Day in Montana, no one does it bigger than Butte. Next on the MTN News at 10. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Friday night. I'm Russ Riesinger. Tonight, a look at how Montana ranks when it comes to national numbers on gun violence and the faces behind those tragic deaths. This is a new study ranks Montana as eighth in the nation for gun related deaths. The ranking is high due to the number of suicides and homicides committed by firearms in our state. That study by Stacker is comprised of data from the CDC and says more than 1,100 people died in our state from guns from 2017 to 2021. And according to this new research, states with the most gun-related deaths tend to have high gun ownership rates. Tonight, we are hearing from those left behind in heartache when a loved one is taken away by gun violence. Our Kelsey Marison begins our coverage. In July of 2020, a 21-year-old was shot here in the Billings Heights. He was rushed to the hospital, but died shortly after, leaving his loved ones behind. We met when I was in fourth grade, he was in fifth grade. A tale of young love. I had a crush on him in fourth grade, um, and we were in the same wrestling club. Michaela Davis and her boyfriend started their relationship as friends, but began dating after high school. But this love story doesn't have a happy ending. His best friend calls me, and he's like, did you hear about him? I'm like, no, what's going on? And he's like, he's dead. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. That was all I could say. Davis remembers July 7th of 2020 like it was yesterday. It was the day her boyfriend, Preston Greger, was shot and later died from the wound. She says the investigation into his death is ongoing. I just started crying because I'm like, I don't. Like, that's not something you ever prepare for or expect to happen. But her story is shared with thousands of others across Montana who have lost a loved one to gun violence. This is an epidemic. It's something that, yes, we have a big problem in Montana and we have a big problem in America as a whole. Kylie Lammers is a volunteer for the Billings chapter of Moms Demand Action, a nationwide group that works to bring down gun-related deaths through education and advocacy. It's fine if your teenagers hunt and they own a gun, but it really is our responsibility to protect them from that. We want to teach people it is fine to own guns. It's fine to have guns in your home, but they need to be appropriately locked up. According to a recent study from Stacker, from 2017 to 2021, Montana was ranked number eight in the nation for gun-related deaths, with an average of 21.6 deaths per 100,000 people. And that is extremely high. So to give you a reference, the U.S.'s rate is 13 deaths per 100,000. When I started in 2016, the average death rate every day in America was about 94 people. And today in 2023, it's 120 people per day on average who are shot and killed with a gun. It's a growing problem that's left many, like Michaela Davis, with only mementos to remember their lost loved ones by. I have this shirt Preston had bought me before he died, and I actually didn't get it until after he died. His best friend brought it to me, and it was weird because it was almost like he was coming back for a moment. In Billings, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. Wyoming has cemented a new bill into law, making the Indian Child Welfare Act state law as Montana's lawmakers look to do the same. Congress enacted the law to protect Native American children from being removed from their tribes to be fostered or adopted. This as the U.S. Supreme Court is expected to rule on a case challenging those protections. And while 10 states have done the same as Wyoming, Representative Jonathan Windyboy of Box Elder hopes Montana tribes will continue to have a say in child protective cases. There's already a lot of this stuff that's already been in place, but this is going to be a lot more comprehensive for all of the systems to work closer hand in hand to make sure that that the uh, the, the child is is not caught in a system that's not to their best, best interest. A similar bill in Utah is currently on hold. There's an unusual problem plaguing a Billings neighborhood. Dozens of dead birds are littering residents' backyards. 
Our Haley Modico investigates what's happening and finds some answers. Now I know these black spots behind me here that you can see may look like leaves, but they're actually rows of dead birds. Over a hundred of them have been found on just this property alone. You can see them just about everywhere you look, dozens upon dozens of dead starlings spread out across the neighborhood. You just look in front yards, you can see them under trees all over. Josh Digley lives on the Billing South Side and says it's the sheer number of dead birds that had him doing a double take. In the last five days, 27. Uh, it started Sunday night, I noticed there was quite a few that landed in the yard and some of them just never got up and left. Yeah, there's one right over here that's dead. Digley found four in just the short amount of time MTN was with him Thursday. And in his neighbor's yard across the street, they said over 100 dead birds have been found. It, it just seems so weird, the amount out of nowhere. So MTN started to investigate. It turns out the U.S. Department of Agriculture is responsible for the hundreds of dead starlings. The agency tells us they're using a chemical bait called DRC-1339 to reduce the number of birds in the area, saying, in part, the large number of roosting starlings increases the potential of passing disease to livestock. DRC 1339 works very quickly, however, dead birds may be found days afterwards. In this instance, local governments were notified of this abatement project and the potential that dead birds may be seen. The USDA also says the dead birds do not pose a threat to humans or pets. For nobody to say anything about it. I think that's what's really weird. Digley says finding the birds has been a weird occurrence and he has been taking photos of each one he finds. They're usually peaceful. Some of them just land. They're standing on their feet. Um, I even have some pictures of some that their beaks aren't even down. They're just standing dead. The USDA would not tell us where the chemical salt is being fed to the starlings, but the EPA says the risk to humans and pets is minimal. But residents like Digley are skeptical. If it drops a bird out of the air and kills it, if your cat eats it, your cat's probably going to be at risk. Your dog's probably at risk. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Let's start off with some current temperatures. Check out readings sitting at zero up in uh, Regina here this hour. Single digits as we start looking into the Dakotas where we had really some severe driving conditions, especially even from Dickinson all the way over towards Fargo today. So we've got an upper level system that's spinning down some colder air. This is a big storm system moving off towards the Great Lakes states, but the colder air is being pushed down into the eastern plains of Montana and the western Dakotas. And that's what's starting to bring in a real change chill for us here this evening, even though the sky is generally clear. Check out readings already in the single digits. It's three below zero in Williston, North Dakota. Glendive and Baker down into the single digits. Only 18 for you in Miles City. More on the weather coming up. St. Patrick's Day is more than just pinching and green beer here in Billings. Tradition runs deep. The history of St. Patrick Co. Cathedral goes back to September of 1905 when ground broke for his present church in downtown Billings. And as our David J reports, its name coupled with the holiday creates quite the opportunity to celebrate. The St. Patrick's Day Parade traditionally goes down 3rd Avenue North, and this is a special place right here with another celebration and honoring that happens inside St. Patrick's Co-Cathedral. Many in Billings enjoy St. Patrick's Day, and inside the parish there is a statue of the patron St. Patrick. Father Leo McDowell says St. Patrick was a slave who was kidnapped and found his way back home around 300 A.D. He's responsible for the conversion of the Irish to Christianity. And that's, that's why we honor him in the Catholic Church, is for that element of, of that. His, his life, his dedication, his service to the people of Ireland. St. Patrick celebrates because it is named after St. Patrick. It will hold a special mass, and the congregation will enjoy some Irish stew after the service. But Father McDowell says all the saints can be celebrated and pass on similar lessons. We look at it as a challenge to us of what can we do to spread the gospel and have that same sense of love for his people and help them see Christ that he had. And so any of the saints that we celebrate are meant to be role models for us. McDowell says for many, celebrating their Irish heritage became important because they were mistreated. Part of it is, is that whole sense of developing that sense of Irish pride that they want to hold on to and keep that pride going. And St. Patrick gave them that opportunity when they came to, to the United States. 
St. Patrick and his lessons for Irish and Catholics became important around the U.S. and in Montana. A lot of the priests who served here can go back and say, yeah, St. Patrick hadn't gone to Ireland. It would be a whole different story for the way America looks and the way our churches in America look. In Billings, David J. MTN News. It's March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. Where do you want to be? Of course, Butte, Montana. It's the only place to be, and people are really enjoying and ready to celebrate the wearing of the green on Butte's favorite holiday. Come with me. It's going to be absolutely awesome. You know, got a lot of people back that weren't there for COVID, so great to have Edmonton down and, yes, and everybody around. It'll be awesome, yeah. What is your goal today? My goal is uh, hit as many bars as possible and uh, try to watch the parade. What do you think today is going to be like? I think it's going to be crazy. I think we've got some nice weather, a Friday. It'll be a good time. Already got fireworks going on. I don't even remember that. Some people came to Butte for the first time just to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. What brought you to Butte? Why did you say, let's do it in Butte? Because you hear about it all the time and just never had the opportunity, and this year we said we're doing it. Rich Hoffman was celebrating his 80th birthday on this day, and his plans were simple. What are you going to do today? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> In Butte, John Amy, happy St. Patrick's Day. Ahead on the MTN News at 10 here on Q2, Montana lawmakers taking up a couple bills that could change charter schools in the state. And later, we head to North Carolina where our Ashley Washburn is covering the Bobcats in the NCAA tournament. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.